Good evening. Our second collection this evening will be for Black, Indian, and Home Missions and will be collected as part of the first, the first collection. Our opening hymn tonight is number 485, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 485. grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We draw close to Jesus in his compassion and mercy that he may touch our lives and with his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy. He shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare 
and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. to you, Lord, in a time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in a time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in a time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in a time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks 
or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish you can make me clean. Move with pity. He stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure many of us have heard so many people saying in this time of the pandemic that the worst part of it is being unable to be with those whom we love, to visit the sick friends or members of the family in the hospital, nursing homes. It so much goes against the grain. We know we need one another. We need family community, friends. Isolation is so horrible. Maybe we can appreciate a bit more this year the state of that leper who came to Jesus. For once a person was determined to be with the disease of leprosy so dreaded and feared in the ancient world, it was in insisted that they had to withdraw from family, friends, from human society, find a cave somewhere and live out there alone. That was worse even than all the suffering as they saw their own bodies gradually deteriorating. The leper was told that if he did go near society, he was to ring a bell warn people, stay away from me. I'm unclean. And so in the gospel, a leper came to Jesus. And St. Mark says so carefully, Jesus moved with pity, stretched out his hand, touched him. I can imagine the people gasping in horror, he touched the untouchable. 
Yes, he touched him to make him clean, to deliver him from the scourge of leprosy. And Jesus Christ has continued all through the centuries to reach out and touch all of us, touch our lives with his mercy and forgiveness and healing. Yes, we come like the leper, very much aware of the burden of evil and sin that so often divides us, so often drives us from the community of the faith. But yes, we know in faith, Jesus Christ loves us and breaks through all the barriers to touch our lives with healing mercy and bring us together again as the family of God's children. This coming Wednesday, we begin the holy season of Lent. We need Lent. It's so easy for us in human life to drift along and forget, take things for granted. We mean well, but we fail. Lent began as a time to prepare those who were studying, preparing to become members of the Christian Church in Baptism, Confirmation, Eucharist. But very quickly, those who had long since been baptized and confirmed and received the Eucharist realized this is a time for us to be renewed in our commitment to Jesus Christ and his body, which is the church. And so indeed you are invited to come and receive the ashes of repentance, the sign of the interior turning away from evil, turning again to the God who loves you and calls you to life. You see in the bulletin all the traditional practices that we encourage you to embrace as part of the discipline of Lent. Above all, we are called to renew our life of prayer. This is an excellent time for us to draw closer to the Lord, to spend more time in prayer, to meaningly say the words, but not just say words, but really mean it and realize we're talking to the living God. And he talks to us. He touches our life with his mercy. God has sent his son to suffer and die on a cross out of love for us. And it is in this season that we appreciate what we have received, the gift of life in Christ through our baptism. On Easter Sunday, we will be asked solemnly to renew the vows of our baptism. And this is the time for us to repent, to change our lives, to realize what it must mean to be Christian and belong to Christ. A time to grow close to him, especially in the mystery of his cross. And so we pray that you will try to enter into that devotion of the Stations of the Cross Friday evenings here at 7.30. And you will find the Stations also on our website so that you can participate from home. And prayer is deepened by our penance. You see in the bulletin the minimal expectations of the church in terms of fasting and abstinence. But yes, the church invites us to do something, something that is really penance for us. Maybe it isn't for other people, but for us it is. It's difficult. But it strengthens our determination that we say no to temptation and sin. Even by putting aside some things that are good in themselves, whether it is perhaps sweet during Lent, or perhaps restricting viewing of TV, time on the website, whatever it is, 
something that helps us to strengthen that sense of discipline, self-control, so that we are stronger to resist temptation. And yes, we are asked not only to renew our relationship with the Lord God, but with one another through the works of charity that are done throughout Lent. In this Lenten season, the American church invites us to participate in the rice bowl effort. We are invited to have one meatless meal and to donate what we save to help feed the hungry and the poor. In all of these things, we are seeking to draw close to Jesus, to come like that wet leper before Jesus. If you wish, you can make me clean, he said. And we know Jesus does wish us to be clean. We've been washed in the waters of baptism. We are renewed by the outpouring of his mercy and forgiveness. Make this Lent special for you and your family. Make it a time of turning away from evil in your life, recognizing where perhaps you compromise your Christian commitment. Recognize where Jesus is present in your life, and you need to take the time, make the effort to contact him, to open your life to him, and let the Lord, who loves you so deeply, come and renew you as a member of his body and the dwelling place of his spirit. We renew our commitment of faith as we pray together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and trust in Jesus who loves us, and can intercede for us. We place our petitions for the church, our nation, and our personal needs before him. Today, our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that the coming holy season of Lent will help all to be renewed in our commitment of faith and love of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the leaders of our nation and our fellow citizens that all will rise above partisan convictions and work together for the welfare of all. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are preparing to receive the Easter sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist, that they open their minds and hearts to Jesus and the good news of salvation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who celebrate St. Valentine, that they grow in sincere, unselfish love for one another, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ruth Bauer, Jamie Davenport, Julia Davis, John Loudon, Francis Salvatore, Susan Watkins, Jim Fadina Sr., Jerry Crockett, Ray Altamuro, Bishop Francis Maluli, David Score, Madison Miller, and all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, that they may experience the healing mercy of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael Curran, for whom this Mass is being offered, and Harry Fisher, and all the deceased of our parish and families, that they may rejoice in eternal life and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause in silence to remember our personal needs. In confident trust, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, be with us as we prepare to enter into the holy season of Lent. Help us to deepen our life of prayer and through our penance and works of charity, draw closer to Jesus and embrace his holy cross. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the almighty and loving Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished 
by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Helena, St. Valentine, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Michael Curran, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the sea. 
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. with me. 
fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Please be sure to take with you a copy of the bulletin so you have the correct schedule for Ash Wednesday and the daily Masses of Lent and the Stations of the Cross. Also, you see there the minimal directives of the church for fasting and abstinence. The latest edition of the Diocesan newspaper is available at the exits. And on the altar rail at either side, you see these little devotional booklets for Lent. If you wish to take one, there is a container at each place if you can make a donation for it or an envelope if you wish to bring it later. The Knights of Columbus Christopher Council will have their annual fish fry dinners starting on Friday, February 19th. The dinners will be served from 5 to 7 in Massey Hall, subject to COVID restrictions, with limited socially distancing seating available for members of the same household. Please see the bulletin for more information. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Have a good evening. Please be very careful as you walk or drive home. This little light.